Ever since the first release of the public beta version of the 3.0 version of Prisma 3D, Prisma 3D has released a lot of beta and official updates with massive changes to the app. Changes that made it look and feel like a completely new software. Before the official release of version 3.0 on the Google Play Store, Prisma 3D actually released 23 different beta versions. That's crazy, right? But it's also proof that the development team took their time to refine and test everything. They made sure version 3.0 wasn't rushed. It went through a deep, thorough process to fix bugs, improve performance, and deliver a better app overall. Let's start with one of the biggest changes, the new interface. When Prisma 3D 3.0 came out, a lot of users were not happy with the interface change. Many people who were used to the old layout from version 2 found it confusing at first. Everything looked different. The icons, the workspace arrangement, even how the tools were organized. Some users said it felt like they were learning a new app from scratch. And honestly, that's understandable. The change was massive. But over time, more users began to adapt, realizing that the new interface was actually cleaner, faster, and more professional. Still, there's a part of the community that stuck with Prisma 3D version 2, also known as Prisma 3D Legacy. They preferred the old, simpler layout, and workflow. So right now, both versions have their fan base, those who love the new 3.0 look, and those who still use version 2 because of familiarity and comfort. The good part is that the 3.0 interface wasn't just about looks. It improved usability and performance, smoother transitions, faster loading, and better organization. It made the whole app feel more modern and more like a professional 3D tool. Prisma 3D 3.0 introduced several new modeling tools that made the workflow much better. One of the most useful ones is the Pivot tool. It allows you to move the pivot point of an object anywhere you want. So if you're animating a character's arm or rotating a door, you can set the exact pivot point to control how it moves. That's something the older version didn't handle very well. Another important addition is the Detach tool. This tool lets you separate a selected part of a mesh into a new object. For example, if you model a car and want to detach the windows to animate them separately, you can easily do that now. Just select Tap Detach and boom. It becomes its own object. This tool gives you a lot more flexibility, especially when you're rigging or animating. Before 3.0, you had to find complicated ways to achieve the same thing, but now it's built directly into the workflow. Lighting also got a massive upgrade. In Prisma 3D 3.0, lighting became more realistic and dynamic. They added sky lighting, which simulates natural sunlight and creates realistic shadows. You can change the direction of the light, the time of day, and the intensity, making it perfect for cinematic scenes. And alongside skylighting came a huge leap in materials. PBR materials, which stands for Physically Based Rendering. This means materials in Prisma 3D now react to light the way real materials do. Metals shine, glass reflects, and surfaces can have roughness or smoothness that looks natural. This was one of the biggest visual improvements in Prisma 3D 3.0. It took rendering quality to a new level, something that was never possible in older versions of the app. Another exciting addition that came in 3.0 was the audio feature. This might sound huge at first, but it's actually not a big deal for me. But you can now import audio tracks directly into Prisma 3D and sync them with your animation. This means if you're animating dialogue, music videos, or cinematic scenes, you can match character movements or camera cuts perfectly to sound or music, all inside Prisma 3D without using another app for timing. It saves time and helps mobile animators create full scenes, with visuals and sound in one workflow. And now, the animation update. The update made a lot of under-the-hood improvements, the timeline system was improved to make animation smoother, and keyframes became easier to manage. You can duplicate animations, copy motion, and even reuse clips. Playback is smoother now, especially for complex animations, and rendering quality improved with better shadows. Scenes now load faster, and overall performance is way better, even on mid-range phones. And overall, there is a library for animation presets in Prisma 3D where you can import free animations without having to animate your character manually. This is a big deal. 
And then a mind-blowing update, the physics systems. This basically allows you to add physics to object or character without having to manually animate them like in the older versions. This update is very useful when you're animating a bouncing object of a fall. Now let's talk about how the community and developers have handled this journey. Even though some users struggled with the new design at first, the developers were very active during the beta phase, releasing over 20 beta versions, gathering feedback, and fixing bugs quickly. They listened to the community, opened early access programs for testers, and even kept Prisma 3D Legacy available for users who wanted to stay on version 2. That's something you don't see often. Most apps would just move on and forget the old versions. And if there's one thing this app has proven, it's that mobile 3D animation has a real future. Let me know in the comments what you think about Prisma 3D 3.0. Did you like the new interface or are you still using version 2? And which feature is your favorite? The PBR materials, the skylighting, or the new audio system? If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.